understandest thou what thou readest in the King James Version? I'm going to try to do today's false friend fast, and I'm going to fail. It's coasts. In plenty of places in the King James Version, I don't think anyone is going to notice that this word used to mean something different back in the early 1600s. In a few places, coast doesn't make great sense, however. Something's odd, like when Numbers 13.29 talks about the Canaanites who dwell by the coast of Jordan. Rivers don't have coasts in contemporary English, only seas and oceans do. This might pique the reader's interest, it's just odd. And so is the Numbers 34.3 reference to coast. But only if you really know your geography. That's because this verse talks about a border of the Promised Land that runs from the wilderness of Zin along by the coast of Edom. Edom, a tiny, almost landlocked country with only a tiny, tiny bit of land on the ocean. That's odd, right? Because though I'm going out of order today, the word coast means the part of the land near the sea. Again, right? I can't really make sense of this verse in the King James if it's saying that the southern border of the Promised Land runs from the wilderness of Zin along by that tiny spit of land. That would seem to me to eat up Edom entirely. Or Joshua 18.11, which is describing the small territory allotted to the tribe of Benjamin. It speaks of the coast of their lot as going between that of Judah and that of Joseph. You can see this on this map. Notice that while Edom is not quite landlocked, Benjamin is entirely landlocked. How can it have a coast? Logos is able to tell me through its Bible word study that coast in the King James Version is used to translate multiple Hebrew words, 14 of them to be exact, though it's usually best to look at each one to make sure because translation is complicated. It is clear, however, that one Hebrew word predominates in the Old Testament, and likewise one Greek word predominates in the New, that is, words translated coasts. But we have time to look at only one, so I'm going to stick with the Hebrew word, and it does happen to be the one used here in Joshua 18.11. This is step two in our process. Look up the original language word in a responsible original language lexicon. We'll do that in a second. But first, notice something. The Bible word study in Logos tells me that, at least in the English Standard Version, this Hebrew word is never translated coast or coasts. It's always border or boundary or territory. Huh. And halot says the same. The word means boundary or territory. That makes a ton of sense. Joshua 18, 11 is talking not about coasts, the coasts of Benjamin, because Benjamin doesn't have coasts, but about the borders of Benjamin. So did the King James translators make a mistake? No, let me explain. We've already done step three in our process. Coasts means the part of the land near the sea. That was the new Oxford American Dictionary. But the three other dictionaries I commonly check provide some more help, and they lead us to step four. Merriam-Webster, American Heritage, and the venerable and august Oxford English Dictionary all say the same thing. There was once, in English, a sense of coasts that meant precisely what the Hebrew word in Joshua 18.11 means, border or frontier. The OED says the word used to mean the border, bound, or limit of a country territory on or near a boundary or frontier, borderland. It comments that this word coasts was used chiefly in the plural, which is exactly what we see in the King James Version. And like the other dictionaries I've just mentioned, the OED marks this sense of coasts as obsolete. We have a false friend. In 1611, this word in these contexts meant borders. Today it means the edge of the sea, which is generally a border, of course, but which is a more specific word than border. Pretty much all sea coasts may be borders, but not all borders are sea coasts. English has shifted. The last use the OED records of this older sense comes from 1618. The OED also records a sense of coasts to mean territory, which we also see in Exodus when the Lord sends locusts to the coasts of Egypt. He didn't just send the locusts to the coastal areas. He sent it to the whole territory of Egypt. And the OED also dutifully records that coast used to be used rarely to refer to the edge of a pond or river, just like the King James does at least once. Coasts is another false friend that experienced and careful King James readers will probably learn after a while. It's just hard to make sense of certain passages if coasts means sea coasts. When Herod slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof, that just doesn't work since Bethlehem has no beaches. But there are passages in the King James that are going to trip up modern readers. In one interesting verse, the King James translators rendered the very same Hebrew word as coast and as border within the same sentence. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coasts of the Amorites, for Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites, Numbers 21, 13. 
They had the word border. I'm not entirely sure why they didn't use it more than coasts. That would require work I don't have time to do and don't need to do. Because the point of all these False Friends videos is not to figure out the history of English so much as to illuminate the meaning of the King James Bible. When people read, He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the Sea of the Plain, they're going to think that the Bible is talking about the sea coast. It will be hard to make an accurate mental map in that case. And in Mark 7.31, when Jesus is departing from the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, People today, readers today, are going to think that he was on the sea edges of these small coastal areas, when what the King James translators meant, using their English, was that Jesus was in the regions of Tyre and Sidon. The Greek word here means regions, not sea coasts. Sometimes coasts in the King James does mean what we mean by it. They had that sense too. In Acts 27 too, Paul and Luke were meaning to sail by the coasts of Asia. But most of the 113 times the King James translators used the word coasts, they meant borders or territory, not the part of the land near the sea. I'm not going to exposit any of these passages that use the word coast. I'm just going to leave this video here. But hopefully now thou understandest what thou readest in the King James Version a little better.